Greetings everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to create a tic-tac-toe game using Python language. This is how our game will look when we complete it. The tic-tac-toe board contains three rows and each row contains three cells. Each cell is given a name like T1 and T2. Now I will type T1. You can see that X appears on T1 location and the turn goes to player 2. Now I will type T2 and you can see 0 appears on T2 position. You can see that X has formed a diagonal and the player 1 wins and the game ends. So let's start coding the game. I am using PyCharm. You can use any other IDE. First, I need to create a new python file and name it as tic-tac-toe. First, we need to create a dictionary named board. If you don't know what is a dictionary, dictionary is basically a collection of unordered items that have a key associated to them. We need to create three keys like t1, t2 and t3 for each row. So in total of 9 keys will be created. Each key is assigned a value of white space. Now we need to create a variable named player and assign it a value of 1 to initialize the first player. Then we need to create another variable total moves to count the total moves. The total moves should not exceed the limit of 9. If it exceeds, we need to end the game. Now we need to type this simple piece of code to tell the user how to input their moves. Now let's run our code and check. The code is running pretty fine. Now we need to create a while loop to show the status of the board and to take inputs from the players. Print board square brackets single quotes t1 plus single quotes pipe plus board square brackets single quotes t2 plus single quotes pipe plus board square brackets single quotes t3 Similarly, we have to write the codes for the rest two rows. Now we need to create a if condition to check the total moves is equal to 9. If the moves are equal to 9, then the loop will break and the game will end. Now we need to create another while loop to take input from the players. Now I will make a if condition to choose the player if player equals to 1 colon and in that we will create another variable p1 underscore input equals to input player 1. Now I will create another if condition to check that the input given by the player is a valid key in the board and to check that the value associated with that key is a white space and nothing else. If p1 underscore input dot upper in board and board play1 input dot upper equals to a white space colon
board square brackets p1 underscore input dot upper equals to capital x player equals to 2 and then break now if the if conditions fail when the user gave a wrong input we need to prompt a message please try again The code for the inputs from player 2 is similar to player 1. We need to change a few things. Now in the outer while loop we need to increment the variable total moves by 1 and print this pattern to separate the old board from, from the new one. Now let's check our code. Let me enter T1. You can see that X appears on T1 location and the turn is gone to player 2. You can see that 0 appears on T2 location. Let me enter a wrong input. It gives a message invalid input and please try again. But we still have a problem. The game does not end if a player wins. Let me demonstrate it to you. You can see that player 2 wins but the game does not end. The game will only end when the total moves equal to 9. See the game ends. To fix this problem we need to create a new variable and a function. The variable name will be n underscore check and equals to 0. Now let's create the function def check colon. For the time being I am writing pass here. Now we need to add one more condition in this if condition or and check equals to 1. Now let's write the code in the function. First we need to check the moves of player 1. Then we need to check the horizontal condition. If board square brackets single quotes t1 equals to capital X and board square brackets single single quotes t2 equals to capital X and board square brackets single quotes t3 equals to capital X. Then print player 1 1 and return 1 
Similarly, we need to write the code for the rest two rows. And then we need to check the diagonal condition. And finally, we need to check the vertical condition. Now we need to check the moves of player 2. The code for that is similar to player 1. The only difference is that we need to change the capital X with 0. With this, the coding is completed. Now let's run the game. T1 Player 2 T2 M1 T3 D1 You can see that player 1 wins as the vertical condition is satisfied. Now let's check another condition. You can see that player 2 wins as the diagonal condition is satisfied. If you liked my work, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. You can also support me by downloading my mobile game, Run For Life. The download link of my game is in the description. And thanks for watching.